If you have no confidence in self, you are twice defeated in the race of life. A people without knowledge of their past, history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. Liberate the minds of men and ultimately you will liberate the bodies of men. Men who are earnest, but not afraid of their consequences. They try to put my soul in a black hole But didn't realize this melanin is gold That's why I shine with this little light of mine Alright, you're now tuning into Civics for the Culture Hosted by me, Benny, aka Poetically Williams the Third, And we're getting straight into it as we always do Remember, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a politician However, I'm someone just like you That has access to information that I can read And become more insightful and educated About the system that we're in The governmental government system that we're in And that the laws and policy set up that sometimes uh, a lot of times aren't created to benefit people of color they uh they with this system is built off slavery this system this this land is was stolen so when you have that case you have to understand that hey there are going to be things against me that wasn't that just aren't set up for me so we're going to get into that and that one of those things with that is <sighs> a trending topic that Unfortunately, it's a heavy trending topic, but it's police killings. And it's something we've been talking about on Civics for the Culture for several shows now, starting with the, the origin of police. I started off uh, talking about the origin of police. I actually started off talking about the Garner v. Uh, Tennessee case, where it kind of gave insight into how police can be justified for their illegal misconduct. And it can justify how they can get away with killings and killing um killing killing people of color killing anyone you know it can it justify that so definitely go back and check out that show that was the garner v tennessee case on civics for the culture if you see it on youtube you can see it on soundcloud you can see it on online anywhere you may listen to your podcast but definitely youtube as well and my instagram is at poetically that's p-o-e-t-i-c-l-e-e -E -E, or you can watch it on the network at watch lotus x so this episode wants us to go, start to continue the conversation of uh, police brutality, but more in, in effect, if you see what we're going to do here is we're going to take information, we're going to do research, and we're going to read on how we can become, how we can become more active in stopping police brutality, how we can become more active in stopping holding police accountable, which I think is the biggest thing of them all is holding police accountable, being able to hold them to a sense of understanding that, hey, we as the people cannot accept that you are, are abusing your use of quote unquote power. We as people are not gonna just sit by and let you in and watch you abuse this power, quote unquote, of power. We're not gonna sit by and watch you abuse your authority. We're not gonna sit by and watch you abuse us. <laughs> Simple as that. We're not gonna sit by and see you abuse us. And that is that is the whole point of this show it's not to come on here and to ramble about what's happening in politics it's not to come on here and ramble about the uh just how i feel like we're just people of color not being treated well we are the global majority <laughs> we did uh build this country we, we we contribute so much we're such a rich culture we're such a beautiful rich uh just lovely culture Yet we seem so we see some some of the most brutal violence and we're going to get straight into that uh, i took a lot of information went online to mappingpoliceviolence.org go to mappingpoliceviolence.org if you want to find this information for yourself which rates of police killings were calculated using police killings data from 2013 uh, January 2013 through December 2019. Once again, rates of police killings were calculated using police killings data from January 2013 through December 2019, along with 2010 U.S. Census population data by race and crime data from 2013 to 2018 FBI uniform crime reports. So understand these reports that I'm going to be reading from mappingpoliceviolence.org and from Campaign Zero, which is which is doing a great job in implementing pushing the uh, eight can't wait, which we did an episode on that. So go back and check that out as well on Civics for the Culture. Uh, the eight can't wait, which talks about the eight policies that we're pushing in police departments to utilize that can hold police accountable and hold them to a standard that protects and truly serves the people. 
protect and truly serve. Truly just protect and serve. When I call 911, I should feel safe. I shouldn't feel, I shouldn't have to hesitate. I've, there have been moments in my life where, you know what? I'm not calling the police. <laughs> I'm not calling the police because whether I feel like I'm in the right or wrong, it doesn't matter because this situation can go bad for, for myself. And it can also go bad for someone else that is, is a black person too, is a person of color too, a brown person too, where I'm like, I don't want to see them, something happen to them. So we should not feel that fear. However, that is the fear that's taken over. And this thing that we're now seeing happen in our country is now shifted from uh, which the optics were a race thing to now it's just a government thing. And that is why I think the push is stronger than ever because all a collective base is now, is now seeing that, hey, this is a government, this is a systematic issue. This isn't just a, yes, yeah, a heart issue at play, but it's not just a race. I, yes, yeah, a race issue, but however, it's a race issue, but it's also bigger that it's a systematic issue that people feel comfortable that they have the ability to do what they're doing you know it's one thing to be a racist but if you if you're a racist and you know somebody can easily fire you fire you if you know if you're a racist and you know someone can easily arrest you if you're a racist and you know someone can easily put you behind bars and and put you in a situation that not supports your racist thoughts and ideas then i think that's going to be I think you're going to tone that down just a tad. I think it's just you're going to tone it down just a tad. So it's about creating a standard of accountability in a race and a system that had ideology in in their origins of how they police people, which go back in the origins of police and civic sort of culture to understand more of that to get back into this. Uh, so, yes, once again. This is a uh, this is a collection of data grabbed from J January 2013 through December 2019, along with 2010 census, U.S. census, which comes out every 10 years. Make sure you do your census this year. 2020 is key to do your census. We're going to talk about that on another show. Uh, and this is 2013, 2018 FBI uniform crime reports. Police departments included in this analyst reflect the police forces of the 100 largest U.S. cities. The calculations used to make these charts on mappingpoliceviolence.org can be um, can be viewed on the website, which gives. Uh, I really love what they what they were doing. Campaign Zero uh, is it's amazing. It's amazing because of how they create a scorecard, which I want to go into their key findings of the detailed information of going in to show what is what is what was. They you can really go into their system and you can look up each person by name. This is how sophisticated it is. This is how detailed it is. This is how actual it is. It's not just BS. It's not just throwing old opinions out. No, it's actual data and 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 facts to help you to help us see what's really going on out here that's not being reported. That's not being reported on the news. That's not being accurate accurately reported by uh police themselves and uh and that way we can know how to hold we can know how to contact our mayors we can know how to contact certain uh people in official official representation so that they can then make uh that the, you know those are policy changes that's what it comes down to at the end of the day that's why voting is so key you know it's not just uh you think about presidential votes no these sheriffs these judges all these all these different positions are positions that are either elected or appointed and people have to get in and people and people are voted in to make those decisions so we want to make sure our voice is being heard so i want to go into uh the key findings here i want to start off with key findings this is on and if you wonder where i'm reading this information data from once again it's mapping mapping police and it gives you a breakdown of the 100 largest cities uh in the in the in the force police force used in there some of the key findings 26 percent of u.s police killings between tw january 2013 through december 2019 were committed by police departments of the 100 largest u.s cities so 26 percent of u.s police killings between January 2013 through December 2019 were committed by police departments of the 100 largest U.S. cities. Black people, black people, the global majority, black people 
the people that built this country. But we're going to get to it. Let's just get to it. Black people were 38 percent of people killed by these 100 police departments, despite being only 21 percent of the population in their jurisdictions. Yeah, that don't add up. So black people, such a rich culture, were 38 percent of people killed by these 100 police departments, despite being only 21 percent of the population in their jurisdictions. That that just the math on that. I'll let you do that. Come on. I'll let you tell it. Only one of the 100 largest city, uh, only one of the 100 largest city police departments did not kill anyone from January 2013 to December 2019. And that was in Irvine, California. Only one of the 100 largest city police departments did not kill anyone from January 2013 to, wow, December 2019. That's that's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> what, are, what are their policies? We need to, what do I, well, what is the, what does Irvine look like? We'll have to go into that. I need to definitely see what Irvine looks like. If you're from Irvine, you know, and you know, you know, uh, and you know how it looks out there. Well, you, you know, your you know, the department, um, 40%, 47%, 47% of unarmed people killed by the 100 largest city police departments were black. That's one of those stats that you read and you read and you just pause. There are certain stats and certain things that you're going to read in life where you read them and you just have to pause. Like, huh? Let's, let's, let's read that one more time. 47% of unarmed people killed by the 100 largest city police departments were black. These, depart these police departments killed unarmed black people at a rate four times higher than unarmed white people. Huh? That's <sighs> Tell us something new. Rate and once again, I'm reading all these stats, uh, stats and I'm reading these different uh, research and uh, uh, analytics from Mapping Police. No, let me go to read. MappingPoliceViolence.org. Uh, right here. Rates of violent crime in cities did not make it any more or less likely for police departments to kill anyone, to, for, to kill people. For example, Buffalo and Newark police departments had relatively low rates of police violence despite high crime rates, while Spokane and Orlando had relatively low crime rates and high rates of police violence. So read that one more time. Rates of violent crime in cities did not make any more or less likely for police departments to kill people. For example, Buffalo and Newark police departments had rel relatively low rates of police violence despite high crime rates, while Spokane and Orlando had relatively low crime rates and high rates of police violence. There you go. So from 2013 to 2019, St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department killed 34 black men and Oklahoma City Police Department killed 25 black men from 2013 to 2019. This is an average rate of seven per 100,000 black male population in St. Louis and 8.5 per 100,000 black male population in Oklahoma City, a higher rate than the 2018 U.S. murder rate of five per 100,000. Damn. Talk about talk about control population. Sheesh. Sheesh. And, and this information that we're reading here, once again, this you can you can you can read these different data and stats on mapping police violence. The this information, once again, this isn't something just spewing out of my head. This isn't just something coming out of anywhere. Uh, rates of police killings were calculated using police killings data from January 2013 through December 2019, along with 2010 U.S. Census of Population data by race and crime data from the 2013 to 2018 FBI Uniform Crime Reports. So, and these were uh, the 100 largest U.S. cities. So this is information you want to know once again to, so we can have a reason to be fired. There's already a reason when you see you on the camera, when you may know someone uh, specifically you're connected to, or when you individually have has been affected by these, uh, by police brutality, by police violence, by just aggressive police behavior. That shouldn't be by the people that, that get paid through tax dollars to protect and serve. That shouldn't be the case. That shouldn't be the case at all. 
That should not be the case at all. There's a heart problem and a systematic problem happening. Seriously. And when we talk about police killings, you may wonder, what's the exact definition of a police killing? You know, there's so much nuance that can be in to what's a police killing. A case where a person dies as a result of being shot, beaten, restrained, intentionally hit by a police vehicle, pepper sprayed, tasered or otherwise harmed by police officers where uh, whether on duty or off duty. So true definition of police killings. When you hear me talking about it on this platform, a case where a person dies as a result of being shot, beaten, restrained, intentionally hit by a police vehicle pepper sprayed, tasered, or otherwise harmed by police officers, whether on duty or off duty. That off duty one is nasty. Uh, on the website here too, mappingpoliceviolence.org. Mappingpoliceviolence.org is so key. Thank you for this, um, for this, this, this database because we need to see this information. We are the people that need to see this information and know when we're voting people into office, know that when we're supporting people that, hey, that they're going to look out for our best interest and that, hey, you're not putting people in office that are following this systematic issue and that have ideals that and have a heart issue where they want they're going to use their badge for misconduct. They're going to use their badge. They're going to abuse their badge because they had this idea of power in their head. We want to stop that. So you have you can go through this uh, mappingpoliceviolence.org where you can see how they define police killings where they where they listed uh, the people that were unarmed where they listed uh, someone maybe being in the vehicle and the police were thinking that was a weapon you know uh, where a driver was killed uh, a driver who was killed while hitting dragging or driving towards officers or civilians you know and many times it's so much nuance that can um. That can that 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 that's broken down into these stats. And one of the nuances that I'm glad that they actually created, which they created the first right here on campaign campaigns campaign zero campaign zero campaign zero's website uh, policy. Uh, just, oh, it's actually the police scorecard.org. So police scorecard.org. They created the first kind of uh, police scorecard, and 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 they use California for their first state. I really love this and I want to see this implemented throughout is I'm not going to read off the different stats in California just simply because that would take up too much time. And I, I want to you to go to be proactive and go online yourself and to find this information because I think it's very helpful and very useful and it can give you a lot of insight into what's happening and it can give you a lot of insight into why you, people are fired up about this issue. It's not that you're against police hell we need police we need police we need community police but however we and maybe we should change the term of police we need uh we're going to create some kind of term for it but we need people that is they're going to be there to truly protect and serve and help and it shouldn't be based on your color of your skin it shouldn't be based on your gender it shouldn't be based on what job title you may have or think that you have going on it shouldn't be based on that it shouldn't be based on that so in their scorecard what i'm what i am going to do is i'm going to highlight some of the things that they that they include in their store in, in their scorecard for example they include uh police violence so they grade on the violence of uh, police use of force by year less lethal force so uh the police force by year Less lethal force using batons, strangleholds, tasers, and other weapons. They they include that to show you the kind of incidents that they've had, the um, uh, the arrests that they've made, the deadly force that they've that they've conducted, uh, the shootings, and other deadliest deadly ways that could have caused us uh, uh, serious injuries as well. They show that. Uh, they also show in the scorecard police shootings where police did not attempt non-lethal force before shooting. Why? Why? Police shootings where police did not attempt non-lethal force before shooting. That that number, when you read it here in California, is, is high, insanely high. That, that shouldn't be. So they give you a data on that. Then they also give where police say they saw a gun, but no gun was found. Yeah, it's always that, that classic. When I saw a gun... But no gun was found. Uh, he was grabbing a gun with his phone. So I'm like, what? 
Uh, they also give you on here people killed or seriously injured. They give you a number of that on the on the scorecard as well. This is once again police scorecard.org. Police scorecard.org. This was created uh by campaign zero, and they're pushing this because they're gonna show you right here on this scorecard. They're grading these departments based on uh right now we're going through police violence. So and then they go right here to break down police violence by race, which is you can kind of see where that pendulum swings. So, and and also on a previous episode, we talked about eight can't wait. Eight can't wait. And the policies to help push the decreasing uh, violence by police. And policies adopted to limit use of force uh, that we want to see push are de-escalation, requiring de-escalation. Re banning chokeholds and strangleholds. Uh, we want to require duty to intervene. If you as an officer is seeing someone else that you work with, if I see someone, if I'm working with someone and I see them stealing, if I see them doing the job incorrectly, you know what? I damn sure better speak up because that's my ass too. And we can't, and, and not only that, because it's a, comes a, a moral thing, becomes an ethics thing. Well, ethics is and morals. Is, that's a total different conversation, which we'll talk about one day, <laughs> but it becomes definitely a moral thing. And where does your heart truly lie? Can you sleep with that at night? That's what I want to know to those police officers that don't intervene, that don't step up and speak out, that don't, that aren't making it a, a, a an opportunity to let your voice be heard and to stop to intervene when you see some when you see violence by your by your coworkers being used in and 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 illegal ways and not just illegal but just being used in uh misconduct like where does your heart lie when do you when are you going to step up and be the leader that you're supposed to be behind that badge is it just only against civilians that don't have a badge because when you take that off you what does that mean for you so also require warning before shooting, uh, ban shooting at moving vehicles, uh, comprehensive, require comprehensive reporting. I'm reading some of the eight, some of the policies that we want to see push. Uh, exhaust alternatives before shooting, exhaust alternatives before shooting and have a force continuum, have a force continuum, a breakdown of why you should be using this force on each levels. That's that's something that we definitely need to have. And uh, another thing on the on the scorecard, this once again, I'm reading this off police scorecard.org. This was created by Campaign Zero. And this this right here is in a, in, a, in a essence to kind of show us how we can keep police, hold them to a standard, hold them to a standard. So on police scorecard.org, we want to read that. And um, what's what else they go? Police accountability. So on this scorecard part. Us, how can we hold these police accountable? Total civilian complaints, use of force, compl use of force complaints, complaints of police discrimination, uh, alleged crimes committed by police. So let's go over that again. H how do we score the police being accountable? Total civilian complaints, use of force complaints, complaints by discrimination of uh, complaints of police discrimination, alleged crimes committed by police. They score. The California the police, uh, they, they 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 did a score in California, and that's what I'm that's what I'm kind of looking at right here. How they did this, and I'm actually going to pause real quick because I'm ending on Instagram Live. I was on Instagram Live, and uh, I'm ending that one because my battery's about to die. So, but uh, if you listen to the show right now, if you listen to it, and you can you can hear it in full, uh, go follow on Instagram at Watch Lotus X. Watch Lotus X. But we're talking about the scorecard right now. And we went over the violence that's uh, that's kind of calculated in the data used in the police violence, but then also going down here and looking at how do we hold police accountable? The total civilian complaints, use of force complaints, complaints of police discrimination, alleged crimes committed by police. These are all things that we need to read into and understand because how, if if I'm if I'm complaining about Amazon, if I'm complaining about a company, that complaint you see companies go down. They they change the system. So if we if we see a scorecard of really if we see how this police department is being graded, they had out of five stars, they have a one. What is going on? What do we do in that situation? We have to hold our, our our officials, our city officials. We have to hold these people that have other titles that create laws and and policies to another standard, so that we can get out 
we can have a, 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 a an efficient operating system of protecting and serving. <laughs> um, let's see here. Policies making it hard to hold police accountable. This uh, and they they give a list right here. Disqualifies complaints, restricts delays on inter uh, uh, interrogations, gives officers unfair access to information, limits oversights, discipline, requires cities to pay for misconduct, erases misconduct records. These are things that make it harder for to hold police accountable. And read that one. Read it again disqualifies complaints so if you disqualify my complaint then damn what do we really say if i say hey this officer used excessive force then you say ah it was this you kind of like sweep it under the, sweep it under the rug what are we doing the uh gives officers unfair access to information too many times in too many cases where uh information isn't being provided to us the people like that's what I love about this scorecard being created created right now is that we can hold these people that 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 feel like they're superior and it's a, and honestly it's a, it's a superior thing mindset that happens anytime you're in a situation well not anytime but a lot of times you're in situations where people feel like they're superior they have this authority they move in a sense where they feel like they can't be touched they can't be touched you can't grab me you can't tell me anything and that is the problem right here is that you have this mindset of, of of one trying to be superior. You have this mindset of one trying to trying to uh, trying to act like they are the they are the law when really you're here to protect and serve by what the law represents. Difference. Uh, another thing on another aspect onto the scorecard approach to policing. So approach to policing grades them based on a rate arrest arrest by year. It grades them on arrest for low-level offenses, offenses which could be misdemeanor arrest, um, which are mis misdemeanor arrest. Not could be. Uh, they also grade them on percent of total arrest by by type, or total uh, to percent of total arrest by type. So all they go by misdemeanors, all misdemeanors, drug possession, violent crimes. Then they also grade them on homicides unsolved. This right here is uh, on policescorecard.org. Once again, policescorecard.org. We're going through the scorecard that was created by Crank Campaign Zero and their, how they grade police departments and that inf give, provides information that we can use to hold these departments accountable. And this right here is their approach to policing and how they grade this. We want to see this implemented not just across the country, but yeah, we want to see this implemented across the country, just in every state, not in every state, but just across the country as well. Um, they also grade percent of homicides by race. So homicides of a black victims unsolved, homicides by uh, Latin victims unsolved, um, homicides by white victims unsolved, unsolved. Then they also go into grading the police funding that they receive. So, yes. A lot into the scorecard, a lot into the scorecard that is very needed, that is very needed because we need to understand, we need to map police violence and we need to get a very uh, clear identification of what's going on, where it's going on, so that we can know to hold these certain officials accountable, accountable. This is this right here, what I was reading to you is the first statewide police scorecard in the United States, policescorecard.org. This isn't an advertisement. This is just activism. <laughs> it was built using data from uh, this right here, what I was watching was using built using data from California's open justice database, public records, uh, public records requests, national databases and media reports. So this isn't just someone spewing information out their head. This is from open justice database, public records requests, national databases and media reports. The use of this scorecard is to, to, to mainly identify issues within police departments that require the most urgent interventions. That is that is the main reason this this me talking. That's the main reason this me giving you this information where I do this research is to identify issues within police departments that require the most urgent interventions and hold officials accountable for implementing solutions. For example, written here on uh, police scorecard.org, cities with higher rates of mis misdemeanor arrests 
could benefit from more. God, let, me, let me restart. For example, this is on policescorecard.org. Cities with higher rates of misdemeanor arrests could benefit most from solutions that create alternatives to policing and arrests for these offenses. In cities where police make fewer arrests, uh, fewer arrests overall, but use more force when making arrests, communities could benefit significant, significantly from pol policies designed to limit police use force. In cities where com complaints of police misconduct are rarely ruled in favor of civilians, could benefit from creating an oversight structure to independently investigate these complaints. I'm going to read that one more time. Cities where complaints of police misconduct are rarely ruled in favor of civilians could benefit from creating an oversight structure to independently investigate these complaints. This is written on police, uh, policescorecard.org, where it gives a breakdown uh, using open justice database, public records request, national databases, and media reports. How to start pushing for change? How to start? Contact your mayor and police chief. Contact your mayor and police chief. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> I'm adding, I'm tagging uh, police departments, police chiefs. I'm letting you know. You let you put these people, you put someone's foot to the fire, they will want to make some change. I'm telling you, they will want to make some change because they have no choice. When you put that, when the, when the public voice, when, when you're able to, when, we, when it's enough of us, when we move in numbers and push and push and push, these people want their office. <laughs> these people want their office. Either they're going to quit, then we can get in somebody in there that really is on our side, or they're going to say, you know what? I got to do right. Let's push. Let's push. Let's push. Let's push. So contact your mayor and police chief. Share this scorecard with them and say, hey, we're watching you, and we're going to bring this to you. Find your U.S. senator and U.S. representative. Using the campaign zero advocate advocacy tool, uh, they have it right here on um, campaign zero, a tool that can break down and be sophisticated and, and definitely give you some information that can allow you to um, be able to not comprehend what's going on, but also be able to uh, share that information and, be, and, and for you to be knowledgeable as well. They have they have they had that on their campaign zero and um, the information I'm reading off right now is policescorecard.org. Go to campaign zero, see the peace act. Also, that is the peace act. Go on there, and then also see the eight can't wait. Those policies read over the eight earlier in this episode. I had a whole episode about the eight can't wait. Uh, so go into those to to go rewind if you missed it, or go to the episode to read more about the eight can't wait. Also. Um, go on to Campaign Zero's website to read more about that. We we want to start pushing. We want to start pushing. Um, you know, step one, inform data-driven interventions. That's that's the first thing. We got to inform. Step one, step one, step one is to inform, 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 inform. Inform data-driven. Data is key. People, this world moves off numbers. Numbers. Show me the numbers. So if we can show the numbers of what's going on say, hey, I see this going on. It, it, it makes our movement much stronger. Ex we want to expand uh, these policies in every state. These policies, the A can't wait. This is this, these are the solutions. This is the process of what's going on. So I'm not just talking about injustice. I'm not just preaching it. I'm not just marching it. We actually pushing and we actually create. We are forming data driven information that we want to get out to uh, to every major city when i get to every rural city and then we want to expand it and then we want to work towards national national police uh national police scorecard you know that's just like this it has more data actually and that can be made by federal state and local agencies let's create a foundation for a national policing intervention system how would that look if we create a foundation for a national policing intervention system to improve policing outcomes nationwide Whew. that actually looks out for black people? What would that look like? What would that look like? So uh, there are going to be more episodes where I talk about police, where I really get into um, policy solutions, such as uh, the money, the money, the money, the money. We're going to talk about the money and how a lot of talk has been about defunding police, but really let's go into how we can strategically and smart uh, and be smart about how we defund them because we, there are going to be things that they need. We, you know, money moves. So 
if we defund the police, let's be smart and strategic on how we're pushing that, how we're pronouncing that, and how we're kind of speaking that into existence. So we're going to talk about strategic solutions towards that uh, and some more episodes. But this one right now is definitely just mapping out the police violence, understanding when we talk about violence, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, rise in power, RIP to George Floyd, rise in power, RIP to Tamir Rice, rise in power, RIP to 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 uh to Eric Garner, oh my, Rihanna Taylor, uh Sandra Bland, so many names, so many names. And that is the problem. There are so many names when I talk about when I read the stats of what's going on. When I say 26 of US po uh, police killings between 20 January 2013 through December 2019 were committed by police departments of the 100 largest cities. And when I say that black people were 38 percent of people killed by these 100 police departments, despite only being 21 percent of the population in their jurisdiction. It's time to move. I could mean that as a double entendre, but it's time to move. It's time to move towards a different type of light and we got to push forward or else this could be me or this could be you. And you have to think that way. You have to think that way. Hold people accountable. Let's do it. Let's do it. This was Civics for the Culture, hosted by me, Benny, a.k.a. Poetic Lee Williams III. A lot of information, <laughs> a lot of information, a lot of reading, a lot of understanding, but it's, it's necessary. It's insightful. And I hope you appreciate it. Thank you. Tune in to watch Lotus X. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a politician, but I'm someone like you that can read and be informed. Let's go.